And so we just keep going, keep going, keep responding and practicing together in our different ways. And when Noam reached out to ask what I'd like to do this week, I I offered this practice that we've been doing in the Tara Mandala Sangha that I'm a part of as well. It's one of the, the 21 Taras. And this Tara, the sixth Tara, is very much uh, focused on racial justice and overcoming uh, insanity. So the insanity of white supremacy, in particular racism and so on. So I'll talk more about that when we get into that, the meat and potatoes of the practice. So now let's just take a moment and drop in as we're all kind of logging on and shifting from our our activity of the day and allow a few breaths to help ease us into this more contemplative, restful aspect of our time together. So allow the eyes to close if you wish or be slightly open and take some deep breaths into your abdomen and releasing tension with the out breath. Feel any tension in the face, the jaw, the scalp. Just release and soften with the out breath, coming home to yourself in the body with the breath. And now from this place of quietude, bring forth a heartfelt motivation for your time here today, tonight, together. Knowing that as a community, we take refuge in each other, the Sangham, or the Sangha, as uh, fellow travelers on the path. And this space is sacred, it is safe, and you can fully be here with yourself, with us together. And I'd also like to bring to mind in this moment here before we begin to acknowledge the land upon which we sit or stand or lie. In this moment, I am in Berkeley, I'm on Ohlone land, native ground, wherever you are, most likely. And that this country created strategies to make native peoples invisible to acknowledge that something happened here and continues to happen in this country that we should never forget, to acknowledge that the earth is supporting us and all those who came before. And if you wish, you can take a moment to take your hands and place them on the floor, the ground, your lap, wherever you are, and feel it as if you're touching the earth Mother Earth, and ask her to take off this heavy burden if you feel that you've been carrying so much in these challenging times and in your life, to just ask Mother Earth to hold it now so that you can rest. You don't need to carry it all the time. And then finally, bodhicitta, the aspiration to awaken so that we may also be of benefit for others, we may be a place of refuge, is this vast motivation 
This vast motivation of bodhicitta brings vast results. So broaden it. May we practice not only for our own good, but for the good of our community, our family, those we know, those we don't know, for all beings, seen and unseen. Thank you. So first, I want to acknowledge that as a person who happens to be white, I am bearing witness, I bear witness, and offer my support as a co-conspirator or co-accomplice with black, brown, indigenous people of color, in particular bearing witness to black bodies so that I can in any way decentralize myself and help to support. And so that is my motivation for bringing this practice into this space right now. And I think it's a great opportunity for, for all of us, no matter who we are, what color of our skin we have, to integrate this practice for our own healing and the healing of our country, the healing of our ancestors, the healing of our descendants, the healing of people near and far. But in particularly, I, we are here to bear witness and support those who have been experiencing oppression based on institutionalized racism for centuries. So I just want to name that right now, that that is my motivation. And I do that with um, deep reverence. So who is Tara? Who is Tara? Tara is a Sanskrit name, is the name of the female Buddha of compassion. But her name literally means the protectress or the savioress, the one who saves, the one who protects. So she is a place of refuge for all of us. Her name also means star. And so she is also like the North Star that helps to guide us, our inner guidance, our outer guidance. So she is also our inner North Star that leads us back to our essential nature, our basic goodness. And so through Tara practice, in her many different um, expressions and what are called her enlightened activities, so it's said there are mainly 21, but they are really infinite. The Great Mother manifests in many ways. But through Tara practice, we are able to ignite this energy within us, no matter our gender or non-binary or non gender non-conforming. We all can access this energy within and around us, and we embody it through mantra recitation. So this kind of ancient high-tech <laughs> spiritual practice called Tantra, I like to call it high-tech because there are lots of beautiful tools we can use. Visualization, mantra, breath work, yoga, you name it. Sending and receiving light. We're going to do a lot of what I just named in the practice tonight. So I'll talk for you know, another 10 or 15 minutes, and then we'll transition into practice, and then we'll have time for discussion afterwards, Q&A. So through Tara practice, we ignite that energy. We invite, ignite this, this wisdom energy within us. We embody it. And through mantra recitation, her enlightened activity can come alive. And so in this case tonight, I've chosen to do the six Tara, and I'll explain why. So her name is uh, Tara Jigje Chenmo in Tibetan, Mahabhairava in Sanskrit. If any of you are Hindu practitioners or students of yoga, you might be familiar with Bhairavi, Bhairava or Bhairavi is this kind of wrathful, fierce, blue-black goddess of the Hindu tradition, while also Tantric Buddhism shares a lot of these, these teachings. And so you see a lot of crossover. It's very interesting. Bhairava is usually the masculine, Bhairavi is the feminine. But her name here, Tara Bhairava, is a long A at the end, which makes it feminine as well. So she means the, the fierce one who overcomes negativity and insanity. 
She is wrathful and compassionate as well. So it's not an angry, hateful wrath. It's this beautiful expression of fierce power that these deities channel and show us is possible. That sometimes is appropriate, and right now it's appropriate. But it never loses the compassionate uh, infusion of the energy as well. And the image is that she tramples negativity and she heals insanity. So in this case, I mean the insanity that causes and perpetuates ways of thinking that cause violence and suffering, namely white supremacy and racism. So we will practice her sadhana to contribute to racial justice and feel and see and sense her obliterating the negative emotional states that cause and perpetuate white supremacy and racism. So the recent events of police killings of unarmed black people is a painful reminder of how we need to continue to work and practice for this insanity to stop. And I mean work too, because obviously practice isn't enough. But we need to balance our work, our activism, with nourishment, with rest, with replenishment. So I'd like to frame this, I'd like to frame our time together and our practice together by reading an excerpt from a documentary about Toni Morrison called The Voices I Am. You may have seen it. It's a beautiful documentary. And it about it's a long documentary, which it should have been longer. I mean, her life was so amazing. She passed away last year, you may know. Um, and in this documentary called Toni Morrison, The Voices I Am, about an hour and 40 minutes in is a beautiful moment. So I transcribed the moment in her words, and I want to read them to you. And if you haven't seen the documentary, I recommend watching it and really paying attention to about an hour and 40 minutes in. <laughs> so Toni Morrison, if you're not aware, it w was a black writer and Nobel Prize and Pulitzer Prize winning novelist, editor, and professor. Uh, she brought to light issues around white supremacy and racism in this country. So what she said in this documentary sums up the reason I felt we could benefit by practicing this particular Tara in terms of working with the misperception, the confusion, the delusion, the insanity. Also another power of this, I call it superpower of this particular Tara, is that of uh, healing memory loss. And I, in this context, I see memory loss as our forgetting of the beauty way. The way that our society through centuries has lost its way. So also she can bring about um, a, a remembering of ways that are more equitable and harmonious, not only with each other, but also with nature. So I'm focusing on the ways of thinking that created and maintain racism, white supremacy, which includes patriarchy, sexism, degradation of the environment, as norms, as forms of insanity in terms of what needs healing right now. So that is the framing of this practice. So I really want that to be clear. And uh, so towards the end of this documentary, she was, Toni Morrison was responding to a white male interviewer's question where he was asking her about racism and her experience of it and he asked her do you still encounter racism she was quite old at this point and she replied with such a powerful fierceness and she put the question back on him as a teaching and so now I'm going to read what she said to him how do you feel don't you understand that the people who do this thing, who practice racism, are bereft? There is something distorted about the psyche. It's a huge waste, and it's a corruption, a distortion. It's a profound neurosis that nobody examines for what it is. It feels crazy. It is crazy. It has just as much deleterious effect on white people as black people. 
If you can only be tall because somebody is on their knees when you have a serious, then you have a serious problem. And my feeling is that white people have a very, very serious problem. And they should start thinking about what they can do about it. Take me out of it. So this echoes in what we know and what we're hearing today. It is truth. And those of us who happen to be white need to really let that sink in. And really, even if we think we're not racist, I feel like just saying that because we live in these cultures that are dominated by white supremacy, we, by ver our very nature of the air we breathe, we are racist in some way, to varying degrees. There are a lot of white people doing good work out there. We need more of them. Okay, so the recent killing of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmed Arbery, are just a few of hundreds and thousands of killings of innocent black people by police in the US. The very people who are supposed to protect us. So this has got to stop. And I'm under no illusion that prayer is enough. We need to dare to explore our embodied sense of supremacy. So this practice can do this. And to do the work to release it. So action is also required. We need to vote. We need to speak out. We need to march, to write, to donate. We need to get educated, and we need to educate. And then we also need to go inward, and we need to pray, and we need to heal. So this particular Tara, I'm going to show a picture of her. I'm going to share my screen. I have an image from the Tara Mandala temple where we have three-quarter life-size statues of the 21 Taras, all within a circle. The temple is in a circular shape, very feminine. And this is the sixth Tara here. I hope you can see. Can I get a thumbs up from Mace and Pamela? I see you guys. Good. Okay. So she, you see the maroon color behind her? That is actually her color. All the Taras have various colors. So she is a dark, like a black red, red in color. And she's wrathful. And you know that by the look on her face. You see the furrowed brow and the fangs showing. So fangs are a sign of dakinis. So if you have fangs, you are a <laughs> dakini. <laughs> Not a vampire. <laughs> Daikini is, this, is the enlightened feminine expression uh, within Buddhism. So she's got her fangs showing. She's got this fierce look on her face. She's got two arms and two legs. And you'll see her one leg, her right leg is stepping forward. And it's on a lotus flower. That symbolizes that she's stepping out into samsara to be of aid, to be accessible, to help others. And then her left leg is tucked in close to her, like in Siddhasana, the meditative seat. And that symbolizes that sh the other aspect, the other half of her, rests fully integrated in samadhi of nirvana. So samsara is stepping, she's coming, and then nirvana, she's also very much rooted and grounded in who she is in her central channel in samadhi, nirvana. Her superpower is that she subdues all internal and external negative forces and insanity. Now upon her Utpala flower, you'll see there is a symbol. So this is an Utpala flower, which is a blue lotus flower, which is an interesting symbol that also has meaning in ancient Egyptian culture, as well as in, in India. It actually is, it's a hallucinogen. And so you can actually buy these. I haven't done it. I haven't consumed it, but you can buy them and make tea. I don't know. Be careful. Read the directions. I have no idea how strong it is or what the exact effect is. <laughs> In any case, every one of the 21 Taras has this blue Udpala flower. And atop it is a moon disk and then a particular symbol. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And you'll see that on her symbol is something called a purba and I have one here too 
And the purba is very interesting because it symbolizes staking down any negative or all the negative energies that could get in the way of your spiritual practice. So I also want to symbolically stake down any negativity that could want to come into this space with us right now. But in my teaching and writing and research, I'm also finding real life women who are embodiments of these various Taras. And the one, what I also understand this purba to symbolize is the pen, the mighty pen. So in this case, Toni Morrison could be a sixth Tara, tara right? Yeah. Also, another one is Nawal El Sadawi, who is an Egyptian feminist and writer and activist and a psychologist. So she works with the mind in the way that the Six Tara does. So she's also very interesting. Nawal El Sadawi. She's still alive, quite old now. She's written many books. Some of them are on Audible even. You can watch interviews with her on YouTube. She's a fascinating writer and activist. So understanding this purba, this ritual dagger, also as a pen, brings to life the importance of her fierce energy, her intellect, her power, and her healing capacity. So, I want to say something because this might be really far out for a lot of you, like, what are we doing? What is deity yoga? I want to just take a moment to, um, to say, in a nutshell, that in tantric practices, whether it's Hindu or Buddhist, the use of mantra and visualization of ourself also as a, an enlightened being is meant to transform our mundane, normal sense of who we are and open us to our essential nature. So all of these deities, if you remember only one thing tonight, I hope there are a lot of things you remember, but this is very important in terms of practice. They are not real entities out there that we're calling to and saying, please come and help me. They are expressions of our own enlightened awareness. So she is like, like the way that light comes into a prism, then it manifests in many rainbow colors. Our light comes through the prism of our consciousness and gives rise to all manner of appearances, impure, pure, neutral, and so we're aligning ourselves with the more harmonious, actually more true aspects of our being through our practice of mantra, through our practice of visualization. So this is why I call it high tech. So I'm going to share now the actual uh, text that we're going to do and I want to give a little commentary to the mantra itself so that you know the meaning of what it is that we'll recite when we do the mantra. So this is a PDF of the sadhana that I wrote inspired by the ancient forms of spiritual practice that come from Tibet but this is an original composition that I wrote and I had guidance from my teacher as well. And this is a sadhana for the sixth Tara. Now you can have this. I've asked Katie to post it in the chat function so that you can download it and print it out and practice it at home. And so now I'm sharing the screen with you now, but you should also get that resource in the chat function before you log off of the call if you want it. So this is a woodblock print of the Drolma uh, Jigje Chenmo. Drolma is the Tibetan word for Tara, the savioress. Jigje means uh, fierce, and Jig is fierce, and J is um, like a jewel, so it's the vibrant jewel of fierceness. Chenmo is the feminine of Chenpo, which means great. It's the same as the Sanskrit word of Maha. So she's the great goddess who is extremely fierce. The Sanskrit is Tara Mahabhairava, you can see there. Literal translation, great fierce one who completely destroys negativity. So that is her superpower, she destroys negativity. 
So in a moment, I'll guide you through the whole practice. So I won't give you um, a commentary to every word. We'll, we'll imagine her in the space in front of us. We'll recite a refuge and bodhicitta prayer to honor her and all the 20 Taras. And then we will become Tara through the se- sounding of her seed syllable, Tham. And you see that's the Tibetan script there. This is the English script. You can totally say and imagine the English script. I'll guide you through this. There are three phases of it. It's super cool. I think you'll enjoy it. And then we recite the mantra as her. So then we've become her, a body of light, fierce, wrathful, powerful, compassionate, but a body of light. And then we recite the mantra and we pray for all beings, our own healing, yes, but also all beings to be free of this oppressive way of thinking, to be free of oppression, to be free of all the insanity and memory loss that causes these types of sufferings. And so here is the mantra. You have the Tibetan script above. The English is here. And it is Om Tare Tu Tare Ture Sarva Bignen Bang Hung Part Swaha. So everybody repeat with me if you want. Just Move your mouth along like a baby learns to speak, just following the mouth and the sounds. Om Tare Tu Tare Ture Sarva Bignen Bang Hung Part Swaha. So I'll tell you what it means. Now, often mantras aren't translated, but it's nice to understand the general gist of them. They're always kept in the original Sanskrit language when we recite it. So Om is the universal sound of consciousness. It's the beginning of most, if not all, mantras. Tare is the name Tara, but in vocative form. So it means, oh, Tara. So Om, oh, Tara, we're calling to her. Tut tare. Tut means come near. Come. And then tare again is evocative for her name. So it's O Tara. Come near, O Tara. Then ture is swiftly. So come swiftly. And then sarva means all or every. Vignan is probably the word in Sanskrit vignan with a V, which means negativity, obstacles. Bang is her seed syllable. It's a wrathful seed syllable. And you can say it as bam with a M sound or with an NG back in the throat. That's what the little dot means under the M means you can choose. You can either say mm or ng. The ng, the ng sound at the back of the throat, is said to be more of an internal yogic uh, practice because it internalizes the sound and vibrates through the core of the body. So if you can do bang, do it. But if not, bam is perfectly good. Same with hung. Hung is a very forceful sound. It means let's do this thing. (laughs) Come and do it now. It's like a command. It also symbolizes enlightened mind in some aspects of Tantra. So the enlightened mind. And then part is another seed syllable. So these three, bong, hong, part, are seed syllables that normally aren't translated into meaning. They're like anamanapiyas. And the part is to cut or to sever delusion. So it's a bursting. Here's a little fun fact. In ancient India, when the yogins would live in charnel grounds and practice and meditate and live there as a way to really practice the understanding and meditate on impermanence through observing death and the burning of the charnel fires, it is said that the sound of a corpse's skull, when it burns and pops under the heat of the fire, made this sound pat. So the idea is that we are bursting through delusion, bursting through ego fixation, that the head is the symbol of, is the self, is this clinging on to the thinking mind of who we, we are. So part is like a trans, it's a severing and then an opening into the spaciousness that we really are. 
Swaha means may it be so. So Om, O Tara, come O Tara, swiftly, please obliterate through Bang Hung Pat all Sarva Bingnen negativity. Swaha, may it be so. So that's the meaning of what we'll be reciting. So even if you can't say it or the visualization's blurry, even just feeling that, that we're praying that all of this insanity and negativity be liberated, healed, resolved, and so on. So before we do the practice, are there any maybe chat questions? Because inevitably I've forgotten a very obvious thing that I should have said. Uh, or we can just dive right in. I don't know. Let me see if I can see that. I'm going to stop sharing so I can see you. Take a moment. Take a breath. Is there anything before we dive in? Any little feeling of like, oh, I wish I knew that. Oh, what do her hand mudras mean? Great question. Thank you. Okay, so the hand mudras, I'm going to show you rather than pulling up the, the, the screen. Her left hand, everybody do the mudra with me. Her left hand is in the mudra of the three jewels, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. And the ring and the thumb tips are touching. All right, and so they're holding the Utpala stem. And the stem winds up and rests it at the left shoulder, above the left shoulder. This is also called the protection mudra. So like when we take refuge in Buddha Dharma Sangha, it's like we're going for protection. We're asking for protection. So at a certain point in the practice, I'll invite you to actually do the mudra yourself. That's the left hand. The right hand is at her knee, so the arm is straight and the back of the hand is resting on the top of her knee. The palm is facing up and out. And that is the mudra of generosity, supreme generosity. Sometimes it's even said that she has dharma wheels spiraling out of this palm, bringing turbulent rainbow healing light to all beings. So if you want to add that in, you can add that in. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, it's Nawal and then E-L, Sadawi. Close, thank you. Okay. How is her scepter different than a Vajra? Good question. Okay, so Vajra which I don't have in here, is a ritual scepter. So the purba is a ritual dagger. And also it used to be like a nomads would have this type of shape. It may be not so ornate with all the different uh, faces on it and symbols, but it would be when they came to a place they wanted to camp, they would stake the place to establish their sacred space and they would hammer down the tents, the yurts, with stakes that look like purbas. So that is the energy of the purba. It's also like the axis mundi, the central channel. A lot we could talk about there. It's very interesting. Now the vajra symbolizes the enlightened masculine. Good. Pamela has one. She's showing you. And it has a double. What's interesting is the top of the, the, the purba has the same thing that the Vajra has, but the Vajra has it on both sides. And so in essence, the Vajra symbolizes the enlightened masculine energy that we all have within us, namely what the masculine symbolizes in Tantric Buddhism is a skillful means that is always imbued with compassion. Very interesting. Whereas the, the bell, often the Vajra and the bell, do you have the bell with you, Pamela? The bell often, the, often the Vajra and the bell should always be together, like on your shrine or if you travel with it, they come together because then the bell symbolizes the enlightened feminine, which is the wisdom that experiences emptiness or interdependence. So those two go together, the masculine and the feminine, the yin, the yang, the solar, the lunar. Okay, 
Anyone else? Okay, great. So let's go ahead now and shift and take a comfortable seat. I will show, I will give you this um, screen share so that as we practice, if you want to read along, you can. Or you can completely close your eyes, lie down. Don't lie down yet, though, because we're going to do a yogic breathing practice first. And then if you are tired, if you want to rest and just receive this on a very subtle, intuitive level, you can close your eyes. And uh, don't worry about following along with the text. So let's all take a comfortable seat where the spine is nice and straight. We've done this a little bit in, this, in the in-person classes from time to time, this nine purification breath. Uh, so you may already know it. You may know other yogic versions of the nine purification breaths. There are many varieties within the Tibetan yoga tradition. The one we do here is from a teacher named Toku Sangha Krimpache. And so we feel our body both as our physical body but also as our subtle body, our energy body. And the nine breaths help us to purify the subtle energy, the winds that get toxic or stagnant within us, and particularly connecting into the three main central channels that we have within us, the main central channel that runs from the crown all the way to the base of the spine, right in front of the spinal column. It's energy too, it's not something you would see if you dissected the body. <laughs> and then the two side channels that begin at the nose, wind up around the within the skull, down along the central channel on either side, and then they terminate four finger widths beneath the navel into the central channel. So they connect in to the central channel there. And so when we're stuck in duality, right, wrong, good, bad, black, white, love, hate, up, down, day, night, we're, it's said that our mental, our, our lung, and then our mind too, but our, our prana, our energy is cycling through the two side channels of the solar and lunar. And then when we experience the single pointed concentration of samadhi, wisdom prana, then those at two side channels, the energies in them converge in the central channel. So the whole point of yoga, whether it's kundalini yoga, any other form of hatha yoga, Tibetan yoga, is to get coerce gently those side channel energies to, to merge into the central channel so that we become one again from duality to non-duality. So this nine purification breath moves us in that direction and helps to purify those channels. Okay, so let's practice. So just take a moment to feel your feet on the earth or your hips on the ground. Take some deep abdominal breaths. Allow yourself to settle in. And then now follow along with me. You're going to inhale and raise your arms above your head, overhead. It's like you're reaching up to heaven. And then as you exhale, bring the arms down and make Vajra fist, where you place the thumb at the root of the ring finger, curl the other fingers around the thumb, and then place the back of your hand at the crease of your hips down right at the juncture of the torso and the legs. Then sit up nice and tall and straighten your arms. If you can't straighten your arms, that's totally fine. Just bend the elbows as much as you need to. The idea is to sit up nice and tall. You can let the shoulders come up around your ears. Take a deep breath. Feel the belly soft, receiving that deep breath. Exhaling. And now with our next inhale, let's all raise our left arm out to the side and then bring the hand close, make a circle, and place the left index finger against the left nostril, breathe out through the right, purifying that right channel. You can see it like smoky vapor leaving the right nose. Then when you're done, bring the hand back down to the hip, place it, inhale, raise your right arm, bring it around, circle, 
Place the finger on the nose. Exhale through the left channel. Imagine as dark smoky vapor is leaving that channel. And release. Natural breath, not like an ujjayi breath, just a natural in-breath. Again, as you breathe in, raise the left arm. Imagine you're breathing in rainbow light into the body. And then exhale, breathing out through the right nostril, cleansing even more that right channel. And release. Inhale as you raise the right arm. Circle and place. Exhale through the left channel. A little cleaner. Release. One more round, both sides. Inhale, the left arm up. Circle. Exhale. Totally cleaned out right channel. Release it down, then inhale for the last time. The right arm up and around, elbow parallel with the floor, exhale through the left channel, totally clear, crystal clear channel. Now place the hand back, you're going to take both hands to the hips, inhale, big nice breath, and now it's going to be a three-part exhalation, so you do a third, another third, and then a last third to be completely empty. Let's do it again. Inhale. This is your last three. So it's a three-part exhalation, cleansing the central channel. Exhale a third, third, and the last third. With a little push with the abdomen, emptying the air. Then release the hands and place some palms down on your thighs. And breathe, feel the after effect resting in wisdom prana, the balance of the energies within you. Let's take a nice long in breath, about three to five counts as you slowly breathe in. Then hold the breath in for a few counts and relax the belly. It's like you're packing the energy down at the navel center. And then exhale, nice and slow, breathing out, relaxing. Two more like this. This is called the bar lung, the vase breath. Inhale, nice and slow. Hold the breath in, press down a little bit from above, lift up from the perineum so that it's like you're packing a ball of chi, of energy at your navel. And then when you're ready, gently exhale, relaxing the abdomen. Last time, slow inhale. Hold the breath in, a little pressing down from above, a little lifting at the perineum like you're trying not to urinate, just a little lift. Compacting that prana at the navel center, relaxing the mind, then exhale, soften, relax the navel. And now just breathe naturally, feeling the mind, awareness, a full global experience within the body. And now I'll guide you through this meditation practice on the sixth Tara Jigje Chen Mo. You can either rest with the eyes closed or slightly open looking down or upwards if you're familiar with the Dzogchen. Upward gaze, whatever feels comfortable for you. And now in this first part we imagine that Tara Jigje Chen Mo appears in the space above and in front of you, like she's arising from the fabric of space, appearing. She is seated on a full moon disk atop a lotus flower. She is wrathful and dark red in color. 
She is radiant yet empty of solidity like a rainbow in the sky. You can also sense her surrounded by the other 20 Taras to make 21. She's the central one, more prominent. And just feel all of them circling around her, supporting you, witnessing you in your practice. And she is there, and all the wisdom beings, your allies, the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, guardian angels, benefactors, are there in the space witnessing you as wisdom beings as you practice. And now this Tara Jigje Chenmo, dark red in color, you see that her left hand is in the gesture of the three jewels at her heart and holds the stem of the blue lotus, the Utpala flower, which rests above her left shoulder. Upon the lotus is an indestructible black purba, a ritual dagger. And her right hand is placed on her right knee and faces upwards, palm open in the gesture of supreme generosity. Wrathful, swift, and compassionate, Tara Jigje Chenmo overcomes all inner and outer negative forces. Wisdom flames spark from her purba, subduing negativity and removing mental disturbances such as confusion, insanity, and memory loss. Even if you can't see her clearly, that's okay. Just feel her power, feel her energy, her luminosity. Like the rays of the sun. And now we'll recite the refuge and bodhicitta prayer. I'll do three repetitions. You can say it out loud with me or just listen along. If you like, you can bring your hands to your heart in prayer. Namo Noble Tara, you who liberates beings from fear and suffering are the essence of all refuges. I take refuge in your vast loving compassion. In order to place all mother sentient beings in the state of enlightenment, I generate the twofold bodhicitta of aspiration and application. Aspiration bodhicitta is the four measurables, love, compassion, equanimity, and joy. Application bodhicitta is the six perfections of generosity, diligence, patience, discipline, concentration, and wisdom. Namo, noble Tara, you who liberates beings from fear and suffering are the essence of all refuges. I take refuge in your vast loving compassion. In order to place all mother sentient beings in the state of enlightenment, I generate the twofold bodhicitta of aspiration and application. Namo, noble Tara, you who liberates beings from fear and suffering are the essence of all refuges. I take refuge in your vast loving compassion. In order to place all mother sentient beings in the state of enlightenment, I generate the twofold bodhicitta of aspiration and application. Why do we say mother sentient beings? Because in Buddhism it's said that all beings have at one point been our mother, and therefore we are connected and arouse compassion for all beings. And we have also been the mother of all beings. So now having taken refuge in a, and a, arisen bodhicitta, we now move into the next phase of the practice through sounding of her seed syllable, tam, T-A-M, which is like her special vibrational code. With the first sounding of tam, manifest yourself as Tara Jigje Chenmo, dark red in color, wrathful and radiant. You are seated on a full moon disc upon a red lotus flower, your right leg is extended slightly, stepping down to help beings in samsara. Your left leg is close to your body, symbolizing resting in nirvana. 
Your left hand is the, in the gesture of the three jewels holding the stem of the Utpala. You can take that gesture now if you want. The Utpala is the blue lotus flower and it rests above your left shoulder. Upon the lotus is the black purba, sparkling wisdom flames in all directions. Your right hand is resting on your right knee with an open upward facing palm in the gesture of supreme generosity. You can do that gesture now. Embody this energy. Your body is dark red and luminous and your, in your heart chakra is the red seed syllable tam which sits atop a moon disk within a sphere of dark red colored light. The image is here if you would like to see it, the tam or imagine the English. The most important thing is just to feel that vibrational energy center within your heart. Inhale, sounding tam together if you wish out loud and we become Jigje Chenmu. Ta Feel yourself as her, a body of light, powerful, wise, compassionate. And then now, with the second sounding of Tam, as Tara Jigje Chenmo, imagine that you are sending rainbow light from the dark red Tam at your heart, making offerings to all the Taras and the wisdom beings in the space above you. So you're making an offering of light. You're honoring and asking for their blessings. Inhale. Ta See, sense, feel them receiving that light joyfully, rejoicing in this offering, this connection. And now with the third sounding of Tam, the wisdom beings joyfully send rainbow wisdom light back to you, blessing and empowering you. And you become fully activated as the luminous dark red Tata Jigje Chenmo. Inhale. Ta Don't hold back here. Really feel yourself activated. And now, as Tara Jigje Chenmo, we begin to recite the mantra. As you recite the mantra, imagine it circles around the tam in your heart, counterclockwise, so you can imagine if you were looking down into your heart from above, it would be going counterclockwise on the moon disk that's flying flat. The tam is standing upright upon that moon disk, and the mantra is circling in a counterclockwise direction around it. If that's too much, don't worry about it. The idea is that it's just spiraling around and round. The Tom and the mantra at your heart emanate rainbow light in all directions as you recite the mantra. And the Purba upon the Utpala flower sparks wisdom light in all directions. Wisdom light is like enlightened energy. 
When the sparks of light enter beings, they subdue all kinds of inner and outer negativity, and it heals mental imbalance and illness such as memory loss, confusion, insanity, depression, anxiety disorders, and of course, racism, white supremacy, patriarchy, all of these oppressive ways of thinking. It heals within us and all beings. Through the rays of wisdom light, we see beings become free from suffering as they awaken to their true nature. The light and the sound of the mantra are expressions of Tara's love and compassion for all beings without exception. So we'll begin slow with the mantra, just holding as much as you can and with the visualization. The main idea is to feel the rainbow light spiraling out in all directions and bringing benefit, helping beings. Think of specific people, of groups of people. Om tare tu tare tu re sarva bhingnen bang hong part swaha Om tare tu tare tu re sarva bhingnen bang hong part swaha Om tare tu tare tu re sarva bhingnen bang hong part Swaha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Sarva Bhingnen Bang Hong Part Swaha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Sarva Bhingnen Bang Hong Part Swaha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Sarva Bhingnen Bang Hong Part Swaha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Sarva Bhingnen Bang Hong Part Swaha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Sarva Bhingnen Bang Hong Part Swaha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Sarva Bhingnen Bang Hong Part Swaha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Sarva Bhingnen Bang Hong Part Swaha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Sarva Bhingnen Bang Hong Part Swaha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Sarva Bhingnen Bang Hong Part Swaha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Sarva Bhingnen Bang Hong Part Swaha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Sarva Bhingnen Bang Hong Part Swaha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Sarva Bhingnen Bang Hong Part Swaha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Sarva Bhingnen Bang Hong Part Swaha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Sarva Bhingnen Bang Hong Part Swaha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Sarva Bhingnen Bang Hong Part Swaha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Sarva Bhingnen Bang Hong Part Swaha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Sarva Bhingnen Bang Hong Part Swaha now Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Sarva Bhingnen Bang Hong Part Swaha We recite the mantra a little more under the breath a little faster if you can at your own pace The teaching is that we recite like the buzzing of the bees as many times as you like we'll do about a mala now and you can also recite internally quietly imagining healing radiating out in all directions her power 
her light, purifying, dissolving negativity, and bringing people to their wisdom. Om Dare Du Dare Dure Sarva Bingnan Bang Hong Pet Swaha. Om Dare Du Dare Dure Sarva Bingnan Bang Hong Pet Swaha. Om Dare Du Dare Dure Sarva Bingnan Bang Hong Pet Swaha. Om Dare Du Dare Dure Sarva Bingnan Bang Hong Pet Swaha. I'm showing you the mantra circle. It's a wheel, the orb of light that we imagine in our heart center. If this helps you, Om Tari Ti Tari Tari The English is around the outer periphery. The tam is at the center. Om Tari Tu Tari Ture Sarva Bingnan Bang Hung Pat Swaha. Om Tari Tu Tari Ture Sarva Bingnan Bang. Keep the mantra spiraling, the light radiating. That energy in the heart is like a generator, generating infinite wisdom, rays of rainbow light, bringing healing, resolution, reparations, enlightenment, love, compassion, equity, whatever comes to mind. Be specific with your visualization. Really pray for the healing of our communities, our families, People of color, black bodies, all beings. Om Dari Tu Dari Ture Sarva Bingan Bang Hong Pray that all those who harbor white supre- supremacy inclinations or beliefs see the light and realize that they've been deluded and confused. That the police do the right thing and protect all of us, that the government does the right thing, those in power do the right thing, Om Dari Du Dari. If you have family members who are confused, imagine these rainbow lights piercing them, the sparks of the purba sparking out and bringing illumination and wisdom and love and healing to all these beings. Om Dari Tu Dari Dari You can also get really still and just feel that everything's all happening all at once. The mantra, the light, the awakening, the healing, it's all happening now.
Tare tu tare tu re, sarva bingham bang hung part swaha. Om tare tu tare tu re, sarva bingham bang hung part swaha. And now, with the solution. After reciting the mantra, imagine that the universe and its inhabitants, all beings, including the wisdom beings in the space above you, that all beings dissolve into light, the world, the universe dissolves into radiant, joyous light. And that light dissolves into you as Tara Jigje Chenmo. And then, you dissolve into light from the crown of your head and the soles of your feet, simultaneously dissolving, converging at the heart center, and dissolving into the dark red sphere containing the moon disk, mantra, and seed syllable. Then this sphere and all of its contents dissolve into the tum. And finally, the tum dissolves from the base to the top, which then dissolves into luminous emptiness. Rest in spacious awareness free of fabrications, free of distraction, just rest, rest in awareness, letting everything go, either with the eyes closed, slightly open, or gazing upward in the style of the Dzogchen, sky gazing practice, whatever is comfortable for you, just let your mind rest at ease, Resting awareness in its natural state, luminous, limpid, and clear. And now we'll come back. When you're doing this at home, just the, the signal is that when discursive thoughts begin, then we shift into the next phase. So we'll all come back together now and return to your form as Tara Jigje Chenmo and feel yourself as her, luminous, powerful, and fully integrated. So it's like you re-manifest as her. And then continue this visualization as you rise from your meditation seat and go about your day. And we'll dedicate with the dedication of merit prayer here together. If you wish, you can bring your hands together in prayer. Through this virtue, may I quickly attain the state of noble Tara. May I bring each and every being without exception to that state. May all beings be healthy, free from suffering and its causes, and may they awaken to their true nature. Thank you. I'll read the colophon just so you all know kind of where this practice came from. I wrote it, um, and this sadhana was extracted from the practices of the 21 Taras. In the inner sadhana, which means practice, of Dechen Gyalmo, Queen of Great Bliss, from the Longchen Yingtig, the heart essence of the vast expanse. 
in response to the great necessity during the extraordinary time of the pandemic of 2020. May any mistakes be forgiven by the protectors, and may it be a vast benefit to sentient beings. Yours truly, in accordance with instructions from Lama Tsultra Malioni, Tara Day, April 1st, 2020. So the template for all these Taras was composed and finalized on that day. So each of the 21 Taras has their own mantra, their own visualization, their own meaning, their own superpower, their own symbol on their lotus flower. But the, each sadhana follows this basic structure, uh, but with different mantras and visualizations. So I'm unsharing the screen, and we can come back together. We have about 15 minutes for questions, discussion, observations. So Katie just posted the link again, which was nice. Thank you, Katie, of the PDF of the practice. So you should click on that before we close down the meeting. Get it on your laptop or computer or device. And also the mantra wheel is there for you too. I ask that you use this for your own practice. Okay, so in this lineage of the Tibetan tradition, often sadhanas, practices like this, are passed on from mouth to ear, meaning oral lineage. And so you've all received this oral lineage. You've received the practice through from my mouth to your ear. And so it's called the lung, which means the oral transmission. Nothing fancy. It's not like a big empowerment or any special guru needs to do it. But you have received it from me, so now it's yours, and you can practice it. But please don't post it, you know, on Facebook or all that stuff. Just don't put it out there in a way that disrespects kind of this honoring of it. It's pretty open source. I'm not too uptight about it, but at the same time, I, I give this to you freely and I ask that you use it for your own practice, but don't go like teaching it or, <laughs> you know, or I don't know. Okay, so Sharon says. I found that memorizing the mantra really distracted me from being able to embody the felt sense. Would you recommend to focus on the felt sense instead? That's just because this is fresh for you, and usually with the first sitting, it is more like the thinking mind needs to focus and read it or pronounce it and memorize it. So it definitely is a bit of a hindrance. It totally happens for me too when I'm first learning a mantra. Then over time, with more practice, it becomes second nature and you memorize it, then you can flow. So I think that if you come back to the practice and you do the mantra again, you'll feel it more natural and again more natural. For me, three is a charm. So three times by the third time, you're like, okay, now I'm grooving with this mantra. And it's then you can feel like, it is a little like juggling, right? You're like, oh, the light, oh, the mantra, oh, the seed syllable, oh, there's a purba. You know, oh, my body is not solid. And who's all out there needing my help? You know, so it can feel a little like, whoa, what's going on? So I want to say yes, come back to the feeling of the sound, the feeling. If you're not reciting the mantra, just feel it, see it. But I would say learn the mantra because mantras are like energetic, um, magical formulas that help align us to the energy of that enlightened being or that energy pattern. So it's like, you know, Harry Potter, it's like the spells that they learn. Mantras are like those magical spells. So if you can learn it, then you've got the Shakti of Tara. And it won't take you too long. It's also good, I like to joke that these practices are like dementia prevention. <laughs> it's good to memorize things. It's good for your mind and for your, talk about memory loss. It's help with memory loss. Yeah, this is recorded on YouTube if you want to, practice along. It is on YouTube. Uh, YouTube. I think it's on Facebook Live. This is also recorded. I don't know what we're going to do with it here. Uh, maybe Katie can make it available. I don't want to make promises. I don't know what she's planning on doing. But it's also, if you search Facebook, you can find a recording of me doing this last Sunday on the Tara Mandala Retreat Center Facebook page. And then you can watch it as many times as you want there. I'm actually doing this live again on Facebook. 
on Sunday. So if you didn't get enough, join me then. Oh, is it A.L. Sadawi? I thought it was E.L. Sadawi. Anyway, somebody says, I found it helpful to make a recording of me reading the practice visualization. Then I can relax into the practice as I learn to memorize it. Beautiful. I love that. And you get to feel your own voice as a guide, as your healer. Yes, do that. That's great. Okay, Katie says, we'll be posting it tomorrow, the next day, on our channel. YouTube. Fabulous. I forgot that we're doing that. Thank you, Katie. It'll be on our YouTube channel. What was the name of the Egyptian writer you mentioned? Oh, Nawal El Sadawi. So it's down, down a couple below. I think it's with an E-L, but I could be wrong in the middle of her name. Someone said, Lindsay says, thank you. This was so helpful for working with the big, big anger I have felt this week in this practice. Is wrath a form of fierce compassion? Yes, yes, it's a fierce wrath. And it's interesting because this fierce, fierce wrath that both masculine and feminine deities tend to have in Tantric Buddhism, wrathful deities can be both feminine and, and masculine is what I'm trying to say. But the fierce feminine seems to be really deficient in terms of positive role models in our culture. Women are not uh, you know, it's not acceptable to be angry, or if you're angry, you're, you know, hysterical, or that kind of all that BS. So these enlightened qualities, these kind of fierce deities help show us, like the Dakini energy too, by the way, that fang. <laughs> show us the fierceness. Let's everybody do that. Did you do it in the practice? Show your fangs, everyone. Men, women, non-binary, all of us. <laughs> Furrow the brow. There's a fierce energy that comes with that. But we don't, it's not anger. Okay? It's a fierce power that is imbued with compassion. Grow that in you. Water those seeds within you and find your truth and let it come out through your work and your speech and your heart, your activism. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I understand. Fourth, Oh, this is the fourth six Tara teaching in nine days. It gets better every time and I learn more too. Thanks, Paul. I love that. I know repetition is the best. It's so good. Just stick with it. This is like if you didn't quite get it and it felt like a lot, it's just your first time. I mean, we can't learn to ride a bike on our first try. Okay, anyone else? In Arabic, thank you. It could be L or Al. You should be able to find either on a search. Yes, she's great. She's very interesting. Um, yeah. So Katie, I had also emailed Katie a bunch of resources that I want her to paste right now. Ways to get engaged if you're not already engaged. Resources to read, to watch, to listen to. So in the next couple minutes, Katie, if you could share that. Yeah, if you look, there's a lot of stuff. Good. I'm glad the links are coming through, I hope. Not always, yeah. It's a bummer. When you cut and paste into this chat function, the hot links don't always translate. But you'll see, you can search. Um, I've got a link to the White Awake website for those who are, happen to be uh, white um, to learn about white supremacy in particular, because I did talk quite a bit about that tonight. And sometimes I get questions like, what do you mean? Like, why are you focusing on that? Well, learn. And there's a great article there. Dismantling Racism, White Supremacy Culture, resource by Tema Okun. There should have, there should be a link there. I wonder if, Katie, if you could capture those links while yep. I'm talking. Yeah, and then links to the books uh, by Leila Sa Saad, Me and White Supremacy, My Grandmother's Hands by Resma Menekam. I hope I'm pronouncing those right. Please excuse me if I didn't. This uh, Cultural Somatics University is really wonderful. Um, Resma offers a free uh, a course on there that I just signed up for that's very helpful. Free racialized trauma course. And then a bunch of articles that uh, had some hot links once upon a time. <laughs> you could probably Google those too. And then I've been getting some information from Instagram from people that I follow and so I've given those names there. I'm sure you might have others you could recommend. Um, yeah. 
Oh, I have new comments down below. Oh, good, you've done it. I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Keith says, this practice was helpful in directing righteous fierceness. It can sometimes be displaced, which is not helpful. Thank you. I feel the same way. Mothers Against Drunk Drivers, powerful, wrathful energy that worked. Right, mad. Good, right, mad. Yeah, thank you, Katie. Good, she's posting all those, those links for you. Great resources, and those are just a few. So if you're not engaged, get engaged. Keep doing your practices. Stay balanced. We've got a few more minutes here. Links to POC Refuge for people of color. Thank you. Okay, so thank you everyone for your practice as we wrap up. Uh, Eve and I will teach, co-teach next week. And then um, I will offer Feeding Your Demons the week after. And then Eve and I will teach the last Wednesday of the month together. And so that is the schedule for June as we move into summer. And this summer solstice coming up. Katie or Pamela Mace, do you have any announcements before we depart? Thanks, Chandra. This is Pamela. Um, and I'll just come on. First of all, just like, thank you, Chandra. Can you speak a little closer to the, the computer? It's hard to hear you. Hold up here. Thank you. Um, I'll talk louder, too. There we go. Um, just thank you. It was really wonderful to receive this. And that, it, yeah. Um, I kind of, I don't have a lot of words tonight. I think that's something that's going on. Um, but I, I do want to just say, like you offered this freely and that is one of the incredible things about having you in particular as one of the teachers in the Sangha is the perspective that you're able to bring to all of us that is, um, you know, unique to your own studies and your own offering. And if, you know, I, for me, I find it particularly powerful and have such deep appreciation for it. And um, I, I hope that that resonates with this whole song. I think it does because that's why we all keep showing up. Um, and then, of course, whatever generosity through um, participation, through continuing the mantra and the practice, and um, then any financial contributions that folks are able to make are... Um, so welcome um, and any anything also just to say thank you Chandra for bringing these teachings forward um, and really nice to see everyone tonight thanks Pamela